And joining me now is Bishop Thomas Pabrocki from the Diocese of Springfield, Illinois. Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Uh, today is day two of the conference, as we know, um, and I know this is the first time that you all have met in person in about two years. How is it going so far? Well, it's very good to be back in person with people uh, and seeing, being able to be, be with them and see them. It was uh, very difficult to have our last couple of meetings uh, by Zoom. When you have over 300 uh, bishops on, on a Zoom call, that's not easy to do. So it's great to be in person, not only in terms of the official time we spend with each other in the meeting, but also in between, just in breaks and lunches and dinners, an opportunity to be to, with each other. Um, one of the best things, I think, about uh, what we've done so far is uh, we uh, changed the schedule. Normally, we would end our uh, meetings with a, a day of prayer and reflection, and uh, this time we started with that. So Monday morning, what we devoted from 9 o'clock to noon with, uh, with prayer. We had opportunity for confessions. Uh, I think people should know there, there was a long line of bishops going to confession. People should know we, we bishops do go to confession, and we ask God to forgive our sins as well. And uh, so we started with prayer, and I think that helped set a, a very good tone for what we're doing here. Yeah, and I know a, a lot of people are paying attention to the expected vote on the statement on Eucharistic coherence. What more can you tell us about that? Well, I think uh, what people need to understand is about this uh, uh, document is really to try to help people understand the, the meaning of the Eucharist. It's unlike uh, what, what uh, some people are saying in the, uh, the media are poor, playing this up to be more of a political statement or a statement about politicians receiving Holy Communion. There are really much more fundamental issues than that. Uh, if you uh, believe the surveys where, where a good number of Catholics apparently don't uh, accept or at least don't understand what the church teaches about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So I think there's a lot of foundational work that we need to do, and that's really what the document sets out to do, is to uh, describe not only uh, those times or, or the conditions for the uh, worthy reception of Holy Communion, but even understanding the very basis of what what do we believe in terms of our Lord's real presence in the Eucharist. Yeah, and it's getting a, a lot of attention, as you know, from the secular media as well. Did that surprise you at all? Uh, no, it doesn't surprise me because uh, there, are, there are a number of Catholic politicians uh, that are very prominent in talking about the fact that they're uh, Catholic and at the same time they hold views that are contrary to Catholic teaching, so that uh, makes them somewhat controversial and of course that uh, controversy attracts the attention of the media. And before I let you go, quickly, um, what are you looking forward to the most from the rest of the conference and what issues do you hope will be addressed? Well, I think uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to being able to spend some more time with uh, my brother bishops here, and uh, we're, we're just uh, looking at uh, some uh, basic issues in terms of trying to uh, promote um, our faith. Uh, this morning, our, um, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, our Archbishop Christophe Pierre, talked about uh, synodality, and that's been a very big theme for the Holy Father. Uh, so we're, we're just talking about how do we uh, listen to people and how do we promote uh, our, our Lord's teachings and his gospel. Well, Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today. We know you have a busy rest of the week, and we're praying for you all. Thank you very much. God bless you.